Hi, I'm Crazy German Viper and who the fuck is that guy? I'm your father. Pleased to meet you. Yes, your mom told you that I abandoned you when you were three years old and I'm sorry. I deeply am. But judging from your written English skills, I think I made the right decision. As promised, this is going to be part two of the engineer reacts to Bitcoin. My thoughts after 10 years. Bitcoin is a scam. Yes, I know this is an amazing video title. In the last video, the majority of you guys said you just wasted 20 minutes watching a guy yap about something that he knows nothing about whilst having his personal biases get in the way of making any good points. So in this video, I'm going to go into a lot of technical details. But for some fucked up reason, every time I talk about Bitcoin, it's the same way as if I was talking about Islam. When I tell people from Islam that it's basically a religion, that it's fairy tale, Prophet Muhammad doesn't exist, nobody can prove this to me, you can believe it, but you can't prove it, then people lose their minds. People get fucking crazy and people get fucking offended by it. I wonder why this is with Bitcoin. Hmm. And in this video, we are going to do a deep dive. We're going to dive deep into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. We will even build one. This is Crazy Jam Viper's deep dive in Bitcoin. Okay, your point was that I have no idea what I was talking about. I don't know nothing about Bitcoin and I apparently don't want to know anything about it. But let me tell you this, already 10 years ago, I ate blockchains for breakfast. I ate hashing algorithms for lunch. And yes, I ate RSA encryption for fucking dinner. This is how a blockchain works. This is a simulation. This is basically how it works. This is just to understand the principles behind it, to get a better understanding on how it works and what the purpose of it is. Here you see basically the network simulation. You have just a couple of people that are in the network. You have a couple of miners that are in the network. We have some sort of settings. We set the initial block reward to 50 Bitcoin. We are going to say every 10 blocks, we're going to half the block reward, which is going to be a halving every 10 blocks. We are going to say that the initial number of zeros that the hashes are going to have is five. And with all of these numbers, we can calculate the maximum amount of Bitcoin that exists. With, with these parameters would be 2018 maximum Bitcoin. And with this, we can now create a simulation. Well, in the beginning, we cannot make any transactions because we haven't mined any Bitcoin yet, but we have to create blocks anyways. So we are going to create the block. And what now is going to happen is that we are going to create a hash. You see, there is the five zeros in the beginning. We have the nonce and so this worked. We can verify the blockchain and we see that the block integrity is confirmed. And what we're going to see in our simulation is now we have the first block mined and we're going to see, okay, there is one miner. He basically got the block reward of 50. He created this first initial block. Okay, let's create another one. And we can keep playing this game. You see, there is no transactions going. We just have block reward basically for mining these blocks. You see that the different miners are getting the block rewards. Now we have arrived at nine blocks. And if you remember, every 10 blocks, we want to half the block reward. So for the next block that we're going to create, as you can see clearly here, we're going to have only 25 Bitcoin as a block reward. And now you see already where this is going. So basically in the beginning, you have a bunch of Bitcoin miners and in the beginning they are basically going to get all the Bitcoin. And what I realized is like no matter how I run the simulation, how I change the variables, it's always going to be a top heavy system. It's never going to be an equal distribution. It's always going to be a small minority that is going to control all the currency. And in which way is this going to be different than those system that we have already have apart from the transactions is going to be just 1000 times smaller, consuming 10 million times more energy. Tell me your Bitcoin bros and your unlimited wisdom and intelligence. That's just the nature of the system. That is how it works. Basically, a small elite of people that are there all the way in the beginning basically get all the Bitcoin. Yeah, that sounds like a fair and equal system to me. Now, the Bitcoin doesn't have any value yet. Why is that? Well, basically nobody uses it yet. The only expense that people have is their electricity bills. And in the beginning, when the network is relatively small, there is basically no electricity bill. So now a small majority of people, they sit on all of the Bitcoins and they are wondering, hmm, what are we going to do with this? So it would be nice to convince people that they actually have some value. So we start explaining people and we start teaching people. And maybe the first guy is going to convince his friend Jake, well, Jake, buy some Bitcoin for me. I give you 10 Bitcoin for, I don't know, like $1. And so he makes this transaction. He sent him the 10 Bitcoin and Jake just gives him cash, some USD. 
and suddenly you have a market. Suddenly you have Jake walking around advertising Bitcoin. And now that we have transactions and when we create blocks, what happens is, you can see it here already, Basically, we have not only the block reward, but we also have the transactions here. And then we hash the block, we get the nonce, and we can now check again to verify the blockchain. You see integrity confirmed. So basically the way that this works, the idea behind it is you have one giant public, infinitely long ledger. And this ledger is compartmentalized into different sections, which we call blocks. And so the way that it works is each block has a header and in the header you have a nonce and you have the hash of the previous block. If we go now into any of the transactions of a previous block and we will just make an altercation and we will just say like, hey, well, he just sent me five Bitcoin instead of 50. Check again, motherfucker, because we can verify the integrity of the blockchain. And since the hash of the previous block is always in the one that comes after it, we can always confirm the integrity by hashing it again. So we always have complete integrity. I get this. Everybody gets this. This is not an equal system. And if you run the simulation a thousand times, you're always going to get a result where all the Bitcoin miners, they are going to basically have all the Bitcoin. And this also explains, guys, you really have to think it through clearly and the way that I do this usually is I program these things myself just to see how they work and then I understand them. So I never understand the Bitcoin bros that are like, well, crazy German Viper, you have no idea what you're talking about. Well, listen up. I did all of these things 10 years ago when you were in elementary school. I was already doing these things. Do you think when you're a software engineer and a programmer and you hear about these new cryptocurrencies and all of these things and you see the opportunity behind it and you see that you can make some money, don't you think that I'm sitting there like 10 years ago thinking about what is this thing? What can it do? What are potential risks? Is it potentially fraudulent? Can I get involved? Can I make some money? All of these things, obviously I'm going to do this. So back in the day when I was studying it, back in the day when I was researching it, I was asking myself this question, well, just a small elite is going to control all the money. And in which way is that supposed to be better than governments or central banks? Can you please tell me? <laughs> Technically speaking, this is not a smart system. Technically speaking, this is just stupid. And if we want to get even more technical, let's talk about irreversibility of transactions. Obviously, if you have a public ledger, you cannot revert a transaction in a system like this. You know, this was just a fraudulent transaction or uh, I changed my mind or I sent it to the wrong address. A system with irreversible transactions that cannot compensate for human error. It's like, who the fuck thinks <laughs> that not being able to reverse transactions is a smart thing? That is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. This is so fucking stupid. When I send funds from my bank account to a wrong account by accident or whatever, or I just confused that I clicked the wrong address, and then I tell the bank like, hey, you know what? I send it to the wrong address. Can you retrieve my funds? There is normally no discussion needed. There is normally no problem. You just get the funds back. With blockchains, this is not possible. You cannot do anything. And then you have to make a lawsuit. But since all the crypto wallet addresses are anonymous, how are you going to prove that the person that you are interacting with actually owns this wallet address? Because there is no link to the identity. So you can't even sue them. There's nothing that you really can do. You're just completely fucked. And have some empathy with old people, man. Like Bitcoin is basically discrimination against old people because, and this is the demography of the Western world. This is where we're heading to a world full of old people. And when you have a system like Bitcoin, where they are personally in charge of managing the security and safety of their funds in a peer to peer, in a fully peer to peer electronic cash system, it's just stupid. Have you ever seen an old person? Do you really think that they're going to be able to do it? Guys, come on, be realistic. It's not going to happen. And what I said in the beginning, guys, and I see this in the comments of the video, I see this in the dislikes of the video, when you criticize Bitcoin, when you have some rational arguments about it, it doesn't really matter. You're just always wrong. And Bitcoin bros, they hate anybody who says something negative against Bitcoin. Doesn't matter if they are informed or not. Doesn't really matter. He just says something against it. We just stop listening. We just stop considering. And that's what Bitcoin is, an ideology and nothing more. Because you just gotta believe. Hold on for dear life, hodl and just believe. I guess you will buy Bitcoin at the price that you deserve. Well, the other side of the coin reads, you have to sell Bitcoin for the price that you deserve. And remember, like 99% of all the other cryptocurrencies, hmm, how did this end? BDS, Bitcoin derangement syndrome is a treatable condition. I didn't know that rational thinking was a condition, but you know what? Since the Muslims and the Christians and the Buddhists already sent me to their hells, 
You're already late to the party. I cannot join the Bitcoin hell. I'm already taken. Wow, I thought engineers were supposed to be intelligent. Well, let me tell you this. This is not the only stupid thing that you believe. I don't think you made a real point here why it's a scam. Well, I hope I did now. It's not just convincing why you need Bitcoin. It's what is wrong with traditional fiat currencies. Well, crypto bros, what is wrong with the traditional fiat currencies? These are very complicated systems. The world is not black and white. You cannot just say like fiat currencies are bad. What specifically is bad about it? What specifically is bad about politics? I'm not saying that there is no problems, but the problems that we have are political problems or social problems. And you can never find technical solutions to these problems. You have to find political solutions for political problems and not technical problems for political solutions. This never works. In the same way, you cannot find political solutions to technical problems. These things don't work. Please read the comments if you want to learn something nice. Well, read the comments exactly and then make a reality check. Well, last time I checked, there is what? 1.2 million active Bitcoin wallet addresses. So compared to the overwhelming majority of people, there's just a handful of people really that use Bitcoin. And last time I checked, the Bitcoin trading volume since 2017 is basically non-existent. It's just religious Bitcoin bros that are trading very small satoshis of Bitcoin back and forth. But there's really nothing that would lead me to believe that there's any sort of major adaption happening. It's just a very loud minority of Bitcoin bros that are ideologically motivated. But there is no substance to this. There is no signs that I can see that the world is going to need Bitcoin or a fully decentralized, trustless, electronic peer-to-peer -peer cash system. I expected more hefty arguments if you get to a conclusion that Bitcoin is just a Ponzi scheme. Well, was it hefty enough for you this time? The Bitcoin white paper lays out the problem in the first two lines of the text. I encourage you to look at it at least read at least read the Bitcoin white paper. Do you really think that the problem is that I cannot read? Let me read it for you. Abstract, a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of an electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. But this means blockchain and this means irreversible transactions and this means it's just a shit system. A purely peer-to-peer -peer version of an electronic cash without a central authority is just stupid. Of course I can quote the white paper a million times, but my problem is not that I can't read. My problem is that I have serious concerns and nobody in the crypto space ever addresses this. Well, anyways, this is all I have for you today. Now I'm really looking forward to what you guys have to say about it. And if you've made it so far in the video, I really thank you guys so much for watching. It really means the world to me that you take time off your busy schedules to watch my videos. It's it's just amazing. Also, I really like the interaction with you guys. I know there is many comments that I didn't respond to in this video, but I try to make sure to answer most of the comments as we go. And yeah, that was it for today. And then I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.